Thanks for joining me today for another fun project. And what we're going to be uh, creating today is actually four postcards. And so what I'm doing, I just kind of taped off one large piece of watercolor paper. We'll be doing four different abstracts and then cutting uh, the, the paper down into postcard size. And the size that I use actually is about a five and a half by four because I do want it to fit into an envelope. I don't just mail them out um, as a postcard. So before we get started, I would like to ask you to go ahead and like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And if you enjoy this video and you want to see more of my videos, Go ahead and hit the bell and then every time I post a new one you'll be notified. And so real quick I will go over my materials list with you. So as I mentioned I have my uh, piece of watercolor paper and it's a 9 by 12 piece of watercolor paper and then I just use my washi tape and uh, separate it off into four sections. I have some water for cleaning my brushes. I have my watercolor paints. I also have my metallic paints because I want to include some of them. I have a paper towel for blotting. Um, I have various size brushes. I'm really not sure which ones I'll be using. So I have a, a nice selection here. And I also want to give a shout out to a friend of mine, Nikki. She actually made this container for me in pottery class and she did a beautiful job with it. And so I do um, use that all the time to store my brushes and some of my pens. And so then I do also have uh, just a white gel pen and a black permanent Sharpie. And then this is a calligraphy marker. I'm not sure, you know, which ones I'll be using, but I'm sure I'll be using at least two of them. And then I do have some of my Stickles um, glitter glue. It's iridescent. There again, I'm not sure if I will be using it, but I wanna have it at, on hand in case I do decide to plop it down on one of these. So to get started, I am going to uh, just grab one of my brushes, and it really doesn't matter what colors you use or what size brushes, you know, because each piece of art will be unique to each individual. And so for the moment, I'm just going to uh, mix up a little bit of a um, kind of like an aqua color and I'm using my turquoise blue and then my emerald green and this is probably one of my favorite uh, colors to to use and mix up and like I said I want to do four different designs uh, four different abstracts and so to get started on the first one I'm, I have a lot of water on my brush and uh, a fair amount of paint. And so let me get just a little bit more. So this particular one I am going to uh, probably do mainly in blues and greens. And I am going to be wanting to add some of the um, metallic paints to it as well. So I'm just kind of putting some different blobs around, as you can see. We all love our blobs, right? <laughs> and then I'm going to grab some green. And for the green. And see, this is nice. And what is going to happen is once I take this tape off, um, there's going to be a nice sharp white edge as a border for this. And I'm just kind of, you know, putting a little bit of paint in here and there. And what I will be doing with this is layering um, a lot of the colors. And so this is just the, the just the groundwork, the base work for it all. And um, these won't be super dark because, you know, as I add the layers, they will get darker and darker. And uh, there'll be some nice, really nice um, accents and such going on with all of these. So I am um, just kind of grabbing at whatever. 
And then once I get, you know, some of this on here, what I'll do is move on to my next uh, rectangle and get started on that. I do want to use a bunch of very different color schemes on all of these. And, uh, you know, just kind of have fun with that. And it is a great layering. This is a really nice project for anyone that is not really sure, you know, what you want to be painting, um, you know, and you want to kind of get your creative thoughts going, but you just aren't sure, you know, what to do or how to do it. This is a great way to, to kind of get going because you can do whatever you want. There's no right, there's no wrong and uh, it's a lot of fun. And I'm once we get, you know, to the point where we're doing some of the um, details with the markers at the very end, that's when everything will pop. And it, it's just very, very cool, very fun to do. And as you can see, I'm adding a little bit of the yellow right now and I'm gonna pop in just a little bit of orange just in a few places and you can see there's really no, no um, technique or anything to this it's just have fun with it okay so I do want to make sure that a lot of this is covered. Now I do want to leave a few white areas. There's not many on this one. On one of my other ones I may leave a little bit more of a white area. And you'll see how how those can really come to life once you start adding the markers and some of the fun techniques with those. So for my next uh, rectangle here I am going to be working with a lot of reds and oranges, pinks, you know, some of the brighter colors. And it's same thing, I'm just going through and kind of laying down a little bit of a, a base so that we can begin to uh, add upon it as we go. Now that's a little darker than what I want, so all I'm doing is just adding uh, I dipped my paintbrush in the water and I just want to add a little bit more water to the color to mute it somewhat so that it's not quite as dark so that once we do start adding it'll be very effective. Okay and then with this one I'll be adding some yellow also. On these abstract uh, designs that I create I always make sure I have a little bit of yellow in each of them because I think yellow just adds a bit of pop and brightness to it that only yellow can do. So with this, I will add just a little bit of the blue here and there just to give it um, a little bit of an accent color, so to speak. And let's see, I want to get some more of my reds in here for sure. I think I want to go with more of a pinkish tone. And as I said before, you really can use any colors that you, that you want, any colors that you really like. Go ahead and put them down and, uh, you know, just kind of go from there. Okay, now that is a little darker, but that's okay. We're going to work with it. And you can see how I like to go right up to the very edge. And that way, once we remove the tape, there will be a nice crisp line as a border. Okay, so that one is pretty much done for the moment. And now I am going to go back to, uh, I think on this one, I'm going to use some purples and blues. I, I didn't have anything, um, set in my mind that I knew I wanted to do. So I am just kind of creating here as much, um, you know, just off the cuff. 
and I have no idea what I want things to turn out like. Now I do know on these two bottom ones, I'm going to use a lot more of the round um, curved edges and that will give it a much different look as we go along and add the different layers. I'll just kind of put one there, get these going along the edge. And you can see I am keeping them somewhat light, light in color. Now I'm bringing in a little bit more of the blue tones. And I know one of the brushes that I will be using at some point is a nice long um, liner brush, which I'll show you, you know, when we get to that point, but that we'll be able to do some really cool swirls and swoops with that. So it'll be fun. And I think what I would like to do is just a few little dots. Now a lot of times I do save my dots and lines for the top layer. Love my dots and my lines. Okay, now I'm going to grab this nice light blue. And this blue is actually a cerulean blue. Okay, and this is fun. I mean, you can just kind of do, do whatever comes to mind, whatever your little fingers and your paintbrush feel like doing. This is a little darker. We want to keep this somewhat light. And then, of course, I'm going to grab some of my yellow. And the yellow that I use is a lemon yellow, but you know, there's so many different uh, shades out there. And so whatever you have on hand will work nicely. And you can see I'm doing some real um, small areas with this yellow because I just want a little hint of it on this particular design. Kind of have it throughout, but just in small, small doses. All right, and then I think I'm going to grab a little bit more of my aquamarine that I mixed up and just kind of put in a few little areas with that and once again you can see that there is quite a bit of white showing here all right and so on my last one I think for my last one I'm going to use some more earthy tones I haven't done that in a while um, anything with some earth tones and once again I do want to keep I'm going to do these in some uh, rounded shapes or, you know, the curves. And we'll see what we come up with, you know, once I get this all done. I do need to be keeping these just a little bit lighter for sure. And another look that you can do that's really cool, let's, let me get some of the paint off the brush. It's a, almost like a dry brush look where it's not real, um, where, it's, where it is actually a textured look. And that can work well also on the top layer of colors that we use once we get to that point. So let me grab some of this.
Yeah, I think these are going to be pretty cool as far as earth tones. And then with this, I'm going to do just a little mixture of some reds. Give it a nice look. And then if you wanted to do, you know, if you didn't want to do four at one time, you could always uh, just cut a piece of paper in half and do two or, you know, whatever whatever works for you, What whatever you're in the mood for. It's just kind of fun to sit and do this on a quiet afternoon. Um, I have mentioned in other videos that I do live on the Gulf Coast of Florida and we, this, as I'm doing this video, my, the skies outside are actually getting darker and darker and I think we are going to have some rain today, which we really, really need. So if you could all do your little rain dance for me, I would really appreciate that. I've been doing it and hasn't done much, so if you can help a friend out, I would really appreciate it. And then if you have any questions or comments about any of this, feel free to leave them uh, below. And I do, I love to read the comments. I get back to everyone that, that leaves a little comment or question. And uh, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the follows or the subscribes. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And um, help my channel grow. That's, that's what uh, really helps me out, you know, or all of you. And I appreciate each and every one of you and the time that you spend watching my videos and following along. And I do hope that you enjoy them and pick up a paintbrush and, you know, give some of these videos a try yourself. Because I do try to keep most everything very easy and simple so that you can you can kind of work along with me and it's not a frustrating experience by any means. Um, you know, and just have fun doing it. And each time you pick up a paintbrush and start creating something, you know, it, it each time makes you get a little better, a little better, and a little better. And, um, you know, before you know it, you're doing more complicated paintings than you ever thought you would get to. And it's just, it's a fun journey. And believe me, with the way things are nowadays, it, we all need a fun journey of some sort to, to go on. So this is a good one to do. Okay, so you can kind of see on this one, I'm putting a lot of the earth tones, some browns and oranges, yellow, reds. And then as this, oops, that's a little darker than what I wanted at this stage. Okay. I do want to put a little bit more right in there. Okay, so this is good. And now this one, we'll let that dry. Um, I'm going to go back up to this first one that I had started on and I'm going to actually grab a different brush. So I think what I am going to do is grab, this is a nice angular brush and it's a 3 8 angular. And so for this one, I just want to do a few fun accents on, uh, on my blues and greens up here. So for that, I'm going to grab just some of my um, turquoise blue and put in just a few little spots here and there. And these just basically, you know, with this angular brush, it really just kind of leaves a more blunt um, angle to it the way I'm using it. Now there are other ways to use this brush that um, create a much smoother look and we'll get to those in one of these. I'm not sure which one but we'll you know work on that. I want to do a few greens and just kind of almost like dots, almost, not quite. 
Okay, I think over here I want to do just a couple. And now I'll be at four, that particular one. Okay, so now I am going to, you know, just grab, I'm going to grab a small brush actually. This is a just a number one round. It is very small. Uh, and I'm going to move over to my reds and oranges and I want to put in some, uh, just some other additional accents. And on here, I'm going to do, let me grab just a little bit more paint. Just a couple circles. And then I think I'll put a few circles up in this area. And I like to do them where they're almost like running off of the page. Okay. And I'll get a few down in this area. You can see how heavy the paint is on these particular little circles that I'm doing. So that is going to be enough of those. And then I'm going to just grab another brush. And now with uh, some, some of the red, I'm just going to, and I do want much more than that on here. And these are some solid ovals. That we'll put around. And now I'm going to mix up just a little bit of the violet with the red. And kind of paint in a few areas and I do want this to be just a little bit heavier than that and then I do want to be sure to leave a few of the white areas okay and as I go I'm kind of adding more and more of the purple to this. Whoops, I think I smeared that. So let's just cover it up. That's how that works. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is grab some of the orange and mix that in with some red to give it a nice deep, um, like a real rich peachy color. And got a little bit of a hair on that one, so we've fixed that, right? Okay. Now, see how fun and abstract this is? And then uh, what I'm going to do is just grab some more, make this nice, a nice, rich, deep orangish color. I guess that really doesn't, you can't really distinguish the two different shades on that, so that isn't really too effective, but that's okay. In the overall scheme of things, that's going to look pretty good. All right, so we'll let that one dry at this point. And now we'll come down to the purples and blues and see what, what we can create with the next layer on these. And with this, you can see that I am doing a much darker purple or lavender. And then with this, I'm going to mix up a little bit of that red along with the purple to give it just kind of a deeper, darker color. Okay. 
and then yeah and I'm just kind of going around I do want to get a little heavier on the purple for sure Um, and then here, I'm going to do just a few little dots. And let's grab some blue and get some nice dark blues going on with this also. And this is just an ultramarine blue with a little bit of the violet that was still on my brush i didn't clean my brush so now i'm just kind of adding a few lines here and there with these nice deep dark colors all right And then I think with this one, what I want to do is grab some, oh, I don't know, let's grab some of this cerulean blue. And as you can see, this particular abstract is going to have more um, of the lines, you know, the the lines on an angle effect. That was the last minute decision that I made. And see, that's how this rolls. And you can do whatever you want. You do you and just have fun with it. Um, I think I'm going to put just a couple more. I think what I want to do with this one actually is some straight emerald green just to give it a pop of color, different color. And uh, I'll do some lines in here and you can see I'm like barely touching the paper with my brush. I really like this green in with the purples and lavenders and blues. And then here I'm gonna add just a few little polka dots also. Maybe I'll put a couple up here. Looks like we need something up in that area. So that looks pretty good for the moment. And now we're going to move on to uh, the next one. And I think I'll stick with this same brush. And this brush that I'm using, this is just a number eight round. And you know, there again, use whatever you have, your favorite brush, you know, pick that up and um, just have fun and do some doodles, dots, lines, polka dots, the whole gambit. And so over here, I think I'm gonna go with lines. I'm, I'm gonna like the looks of that, I can tell. Uh, so I'm gonna do some lines and polka dots on this one also. And we'll come over here, we'll get our polka dots down and then start with our dashes we'll call them dashes that sounds better than lines doesn't it see these are the little things you can leave down in the comments if i'm saying something you can always correct me or change it or whatever i appreciate that all right so now i'm going to actually i'm going to grab some of my violet and mix that in with uh some of the reds to give it this really cool almost a uh, kind of a muddy color, kind of, sorta. I do want it to be just a little darker. Okay, and then over here. And with this purplish color, I'm gonna, I think, add some big um, dots or ovals. 
running right off the paper. I kind of like that. And I know none of this really looks too promising at the moment. I know they, they do all look a little uh, strange, but once we once we start adding the um, markers, we definitely will get some fun looks on this. I've had a lot of people that I have sent these to that have put them in frames and uh, decorated their you know desk or whatever, and um, they absolutely love them. Okay, so we're good with that. So now what I want to do is take my uh, my fine liner, my long liner, and this is where I'm going to bring in some of the metallics. Okay, now we're going to have fun with the metallics. So I think for the, the blues, I'm going to put some metallics on all of these because they do make it pop very nice. Between the metallics and then with the, the markers, we can do some really cool stuff. So when you use a long uh, pen, uh, brush, liner brush, you can really do some fun stuff. And so for this one, I'm just gonna have some, I don't know, swirly gigs. Is that what we wanna call them? And you may not see it real well on the video, and I do apologize for that, but in real life, you know, they really do make it pop. So I'm just kind of putting a few of these around. And it's not too many. I just want some, you know, as a fun little accent on here. So I think that's good on that one. And then to go to the next one, I'm going to do something a little bit different. It's not necessarily going to be the swirly gigs like that. So on this one, I'm going to just do uh, some curved lines. And I'm using the same color of the um, metallics. And I have several to choose from. If you have metallic paints and want to choose different shades of the metallics on your designs, feel free. In fact, I'll probably use a different one on my other two. But on this one, I just kind of wanted to do some curved lines throughout. Okay, some crisscrosses, that's fun. Okay, so I will take that off, and now I'm going to come down to this one because, well, in fact, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do because I do see a little spot that is still wet on here. So I'm just gonna take my paper towel and dab that so that it does dry a little bit quicker. Uh, so on this one, I'm grabbing this darker one, and I do apologize, I don't know the actual names of all of these different metallics without looking, well, without looking at the box. So what I'm using here is a copper. I did just cheat and look at the box. So I think on here, uh, whoops, didn't mean to do that. So I'll show you how you fix that. Just dab a little bit of water onto your towel and just kind of dab. You can also, I might have to incorporate the, the um, metallic paints with that one, but you can, you know, there's a couple of different ways that you can remove paint and that was one of them. <laughs> okay, so with this one, I'm just gonna do some smaller little swirlies. And I'm trying to do it so that you can see, you know, what I'm doing with my hand, although it is easier if you hold it directly straight up and down and just do like barely touching the paper and just kind of do small swirly gigs but there again you do you you know and whatever whatever your little thing that you like to do you know put your personality into it
And as I mentioned, these don't show up, I don't think, on the camera quite as well as they do in real life, but they really are adorable. You know, the metallic paints, they just add a bit of a pop. Okay, and now for this one, I think what I'm going to do on this is the silver. And that, the little spot where I dropped the brush, you can't really see that. There is a little bit of a shimmer to that, but you can't really notice it. And so I'm going to do the same thing on this one, which is the small little swirlies uh, throughout. Oh, these are so cute. They're so cool. A lot of fun. All right. Now, in the description below, I will have a link for these metallic paints because they are a lot of fun. And uh, you can really add so much to any of your paintings with with these uh, you know with these paints okay so this on this particular one with this silver it is a little more muted but with just the right shimmer I mean it does stand out pretty nice Okay, so for the most part, I do believe I am done with my paints. I'm gonna set those aside and I'm gonna set my water aside. So at this point, I am going to grab my um, Sharpie marker. And it is important to have a permanent marker when you're doing these, just so that, that the colors don't run. And uh, let me just make sure I have this centered good. Yep, I do. Okay, so now we're going to go through and just add in some fun little accents. And so with these little dabs of the green that I had added earlier, I'm just going to go through and kind of do a little um, outline, so to speak. And we'll do it over on these as well. And then because I don't have any of the lines on this one, I'm going to now add them with my marker. And so in doing this, I'm then going to add cross lines on here, but not solidly all the way through it. Okay, and I'll do another one of those down in this area, going a different angle, of course. See how fun this is? And then uh, just be careful you don't put your hand in wet paint anywhere. Okay, and then here I think we'll add, I'll tell you what I do like to always add to my abstracts is a little heart somewhere, just one little heart. So I think on this one I'm going to kind of put it in this dark blue and um, add a few squiggly lines there. So I don't know why, but that's just one of those little hangups that I have. Um, and then I do want to put in some dots because I have dots on probably every painting that I've ever done. There might be a few exceptions out there, but I just love my dots. And then down here, we're going to put just a thing of dots. And over here. And these, I'm going to kind of have them appear to be going like off of the paper. And uh, so another thing that is always fun, I'll tell you what I want to do. Another thing that's fun is adding some uh, small flowers. So I did grab a finer point. This is a Micron 05. It's a finer point. 
and I'm just going to do just a simple little half flower. And as you've seen in some of my other videos, I have done really cute little uh, greeting cards with these flowers. Okay, so there's one, and then down here, I'm going to put another. And they're just small. Keep them kind of simple. And I think maybe I'll put one more over here. Okay, now how cute is that? So you can see as you start adding some of the um, black marker to it, it really makes things pop. So I'm going to set this aside just for a moment and grab my gel pen because there are some of these darker areas that I do want to, uh, you know, take advantage of. And so on this dark blue square, I just want to add some white uh, boxes or checkers, I guess. And then down here, I'm just going to add some stripes. and maybe a couple little dots up in this area. The, the trick is, you know, of course, the white gel pen, and I don't know if I really even need to say it, but it has to be done on the darker areas, of course. I just thought I'd mention it since I just keep talking and talking and talking. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna let that set for just a minute because I have to think about what else I wanna put on that particular uh, design. So I'm gonna come over to this one and kind of work on this. Now I pick, did pick up my 05 Micron marker again for this. And I'm just putting little dots on the inside of these circles that I had put earlier. And if you have finer point markers, you know, that you want to use that would be really well uh, also if you have different colored markers not just black or white but if you had um, which I have some I just they're not here with me at the moment but um, you know you can always do different colored markers on these also there's just no limit as to what you can do that's the fun thing about the abstracts you know, you can kind of do as much or as little. And there I'm just doing some curved lines and adding some little polka dots in between. Um, I think on this one I want to add my little heart. That's almost a heart shape upside down right there. But I think on here I'm going to put it right here okay and then up here we can always do some some of my dots and I th and then let's put some dots down here too and then on this one there is a flower that I want to do this is kind of like a Mm, I'm going to go with a, a rose. And it's just, you know, doing um, like a, a kind of like a jagged line, you know, in, in a rough circle. And then up here, I'm going to put one in also. And over here we're going to add another one i actually had done a video with some carnations that i kind of drew like this also so we'll we'll call these either a rose or a carnation whatever trips your trigger how's that sound so we have a few of those in and then i'm going to turn this just a little bit uh, what i want to do is follow this line around the for the darker color there 
and I'm doing the same thing. So that same pattern as I did here, I'm kind of incorporating there. I, and that's another thing that I do like to do if I have one particular thing going on in the abstract, I like to do a few of them just to give it some equal, equal opportunity, equal, I don't know what I, what do I, I don't want, I don't know what I want to call it. <laughs> um, kind of getting off track here a little bit. Now this one, I'm going to follow that around and then we can follow it, you know, and just kind of make a real wavy thing out of it. So we'll do the same over here. And then um, I think in between here, we're going to do this one also. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it's just fun putting some little squiggles and such in there. And then um, there's my little heart. So I think over here, we're going to add some dots. We have a lot of dots going on in this particular uh, abstract. And then on this one, I'm just kind of following this around, just part of it, not all of it. And I'm going to come up here and so I, I kind of did some of it, but not all of it, that, that color, that orange color blob. And um, over here, I'm going to do another, why don't we call this rainbow? Curved rainbow with dots. Okay. And then up here, I want to, I think, add just some circles. And, hmm, I'm trying to come up with ideas in my head of what else I want to put on here. It doesn't look quite full enough. Well, I'm going to let that set for just a minute because I do want to go back to this one. And on this one, I'm going to put in some leaves, just leaves. Um, they're always, always fun to draw and it's good to practice. This is really good practice for, you know, whether you're doing flowers or leaves or whatever. Um, it's, you know, it's just good practice. And you can make them as abstract as you want, or if you want to, them to look real, you can do that. You know, it's just all in what you want to do and what you like to draw. I just had two red cardinals flying around right outside my window. That was kind of cute. Okay, so then I think over here, I want to, uh, do some lines coming off of the page. I always like, because once we, you know, take the tape off, it will look really cool when things are, it looks like they're going off the picture. And so for down here, uh, what I want to do is just take my marker and go around these dots, these darker ones. And With these lines, I'm just going to accent them with the black marker. Okay, and then over here, I'm going to follow these around also. The black, when you do that, the black just kind of highlights that purple uh, color. And so down here, I'm not going to do those. Those I think I'll just do a little white dot in, in the middle of those. And then um, 
I think on this one, because I did all the little swirly gigs with the copper metallic paint, I'm going to kind of do that with this also. And they're just, you know, kind of, kind of like a circle. You go forward and then backward or clockwise and then counterclockwise with the circles. And that's what I did with the uh, long liner brush also. So kind of get a little bit of a theme going, I guess, right? Okay, so I'm going to set this, let me do one more right there. And actually with these lines, I think I want to do the same thing, just kind of highlight them with the marker, with the black. And I'm going to set this down because I do want to pick up my gel pen. And, you know, it's pretty common to pick up one, put one down as far as all these markers. All right, and then here we'll do, well, I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, I think that'll work. Just add little dots in the middle. These gel pens, you know, when you're using these, if you write really light with them, they work much better than pressing down hard. So just kind of always keep that in mind. Um, and while I do have this in my hand, I'm going to come up here and just do some lines through this blue. There are some of those blues. It doesn't show real well. The blue isn't quite dark enough like it showed up on those. All right, so then um, let me grab a smaller, a finer point. This is an O2 micron, so this is a very fine point. And with this one, I'm going to just circle these little brown dots and you can see I'm not being real concerned about staying right on the edge of them and then here I'm just kind of going along the kind of framing in some of these um, color blotches for whatever reason give them a little bit of a highlight I guess right And then if you wanted to, you know, if you were going along and had the different colors down and wanted to write something in there, uh, a lot of times people do enjoy doing that. Just, you know, like hope, love, some of the simple, um, you know, positive words. That's always a fun thing to do. I'm not going to do it on any of these, but it's just a suggestion for all of you. Okay, and then here I do want to kind of go right in between there and just highlight that one also. And that. All right, and then over for this one. Now this one is a little bit darker, so I'm going to start out with my gel pen on this particular one. And... Uh, Do some dots in some of the darker purple areas and in all honesty dots and dashes go a long way you know they just add so much to some of these fun abstract paintings then on this one I'm gonna kind of add it into the the purple dashes and it's very subtle but it does add a busyness look to it, which is fun. Then we're gonna add dots in here to these darker purples. And that's why on some of these, if you like to use a white gel pen, make them much darker than what I've done. And you can, you know, then you get a lot more use out of the gel pen and, and the white. 
Now, if you wanted to, if you don't have a white gel pen, but you have some white gouache, you can always use that and paint in some of your accents and your little doodles. Um, now in this white area here, I'm going to just kind of highlight it. And this is my very fine uh, Micron pen. That's why the dots are so small. And I'm going to do that here on this white area also. On some of those other ones, I didn't really take advantage of the white areas like I usually try to. So I think on this one, I will do that. I like to leave the white areas and, and do some fun little uh, designs in them. Okay. Very small little areas. But look at how cool it's looking when I do all of these dots all over on the white areas. There's just so many, and I mean, it's endless, the looks that you can achieve on these um, abstracts. And so I guess that looks good for all the little, for the little dots. I wanna grab a little bit heavier of a marker, so I'm going to grab my Sharpie. And then with this, I want to kind of do a little highlight on these dots. This is a very common thing that I do. You can tell I've done it on just about all of these. And um, then also I think on this one, I am going to do some of the lines. So you can see kind of a common uh, theme that I do get going on in, on a lot of these. And over here, I'm gonna do some of the lines. And on these, I'm not going to do the, the cross dashes on them. I'll just leave them like that. Um, I think with these, I'm going to just do a little bit of a black highlight on those dashes. And then if we come up here, we can do some dashes on those. And then for this one, I do want to put my little heart, I'm going to do it with a finer, with my little O2, I do want it to be a little more delicate because I'm going to put it in a light area, which I don't always do that, but on that one I thought I just felt like I should. Always go with your gut feeling, you know. And I guess some of these yellow areas I'm going to go through and. Just put in a few little lines here and there. This one in real life does look very nice with the uh, silver, I do have to say. And I, as I mentioned before, I don't know how well you can actually see it on the video, but it really, the yellow or the, the silver is really, really nice. I'm liking that a lot. Okay. I think we can always go like this. And just throw a few circles in. Let's see. Let's just kind of throw a few circles in over here. And maybe down here.
And then if you want to, you know, if you keep going and going and making it very, very busy, that's a great look also. I'm not going to do it with these just because it takes up a lot of time and I don't want my videos to get too awfully long. But I do want to give you a good idea of some, you know, some of the things that you can do with these that, uh, you know, just really makes them look cool. You have fun doing it and, you know, it gets your creative uh, process going and that's the whole purpose of this so that I'm kind of doing I don't know like a puffy cloud type of look to it if that's what we want to call it we'll do a couple of those on here just to give it that illusion or just for something a little different and then we can always you know, crop in some of these square looks that I did with that uh, angular brush, which I had planned on using the angular angular brush to do some smooth uh, strokes with it, but I guess I didn't get to that on any of these. So maybe on the next one, because I will be doing more videos with the um, with the abstracts. I know a lot of people really enjoy them, so I will be putting more out, and I'll come up with uh, different techniques that you can use with them. Okay, perfect. So I did pause the video for a minute so that I could remove the tape from the paper uh, just because my camera angle lens isn't large enough for you to see me ripping all the tape off. So now that I do have that taken off, I have my Fiskars uh, paper cutter. And what I'll do is put this in here and then I line up the uh, middle of this and cut that. And then we'll put this in and just kind of, and I just kind of eyeball this. I mean, I don't measure anything. And so there's that. And then to cut this. Okay, so now like this one, the edges are a little bit wider on the two outside. So I'll just kind of put in here and trim it up a little bit. Whoops. There, see how cute this is? And the same thing happened on all of these. So and that's pretty common you know when you take just a piece of paper and then you're putting the tape on it there is always a little bit of fine tuning and trimming that you need to do afterwards so we just take a minute to get these done and then what, give me half a second here I'll get these completed and then I'll show you how cute all of them are once they are all nicely trimmed up and ready to go out. Put that over there. And some of these colors, they are just absolutely gorgeous. But this is, like I said, you know, this is a fun way to get creative and uh, then, you know, do some, whether you want to call them postcards or just little mini abstract prints, uh, either way, they're all so darn cute. So we have that and that and that and that. Okay, and I just want to see if I can get them all into view here. All right, so there we go. So we do have all four complete. And then at this point, if you're looking at each one individually and you feel like they need something like a little bit more as far as the uh, markers or pens or colored pencils or whatever you use, you know, this is the time to go ahead and do that. It's always fun to maybe sign them down on the bottom in the corner. Uh, let me grab my O2 pen here and just down here. And this is what I always do. I just put my first name, everybody knows who I am, and the year. 
Okay, so there, and I'll do that with all of them, and then I will probably send them out as little postcards in an envelope, and uh, I'm sure I'll see several of these framed in, people will send me pictures of them framed and on their wall or on their desk, and uh, you know, they'll enjoy them forever. So that's it for today. And as I mentioned before, if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, if you could go ahead and do that now, I really would appreciate it. And like this video if you've enjoyed this. Leave comments below. Um, hit the bell if you want to see more of my videos as they come up. I really appreciate all of you, each and every one of you, so very much. So until next time, ciao for now.